Okay, so if we take this function, it's still absolute value, but now we have, uh, again, all the different kinds of transformations that we can. Let's take a look at how this graph is affected here. Okay, so what is the vertical shift? We, bless you. We know we're going to move up one, so the vertical shift is plus one. Our horizontal shift, what value of x would give us a zero inside the absolute value expression? Two, so that gets shifted over. And so now we know this is where our vertex is going to fall. The vertex is the point where those, uh, where the, the tip of that V is. And so now do we know whether this graph is going to go open up or down? The fact that it's negative means we're going to take this V shape and we're going to reflect it across the, the X axis or we're going to vertically reflect it. So we know that this is going to open down. So I'm going to, if I label this point, I'm going to label it 2, 1. Labeling above helps me uh, remind myself that this graph is going to open down. I'm not going to draw through my label. And, and in fact, we know as it opens down, is it going to shrink or stretch? Now the number, again, regardless of the sign, the number itself has an absolute value less than 1. So it's going to, going to shrink. So it's going to be a steeper graph. And in fact, you can use the slope to find it. So we're going negative. So down 1 over 2. So we go down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2 in each direction. And then we can just connect those and we get our sketch of the graph. Okay, so again, all we did was we applied the transformation rules. Right. One of the additional things that you're going to be asked to do uh, on this is you're going to be asked to identify the, the function notation. Transformations for a graph. Okay, so here's what that means. Okay, so when you go back to the different types of um, transformations, okay, when you add something outside of the function, again, this represented a vertical shift. When you added something inside the function, this represented a horizontal shift. And then if you multiplied something, especially a negative, in front of the function, this was a vertical reflection. And which also may be called reflection across the x-axis. And then if you multiplied something in front of your function, this is going to be uh, several different transformations, but it, it's usually going to indicate stretching or shrinking. Okay, so these are the different transformation rules that we're applying, and again, they, they apply to any function. So what you, you're going to need to be able to do is take a look at a graph or a piece of information and you're going to be uh, need to be able to express this whole equation in terms of these transformations. Okay? And so the way that we would do that is we take our starting function, and you basically you're going to replace your actual function with the f of symbol, so f with the parentheses. So if I wanted to identify all the shifting that occurs on this function, what I would say is f of Okay, so, what transformation occurs outside of this function? We're moving it up one, so we put a plus one on the outside. Okay, what about the horizontal shifting? You can see it right inside here. If this point got moved, so it got moved up one, it also got moved to the right two. So what value would you express inside? X minus two. Okay, does it have a negative out front? Yes, so there'll be a negative out here. And then finally, is it going to shrink or stretch? We see that it's stretched or it's uh, shrunken and flattened out. 
And so you can just use the counting of your next point, down one over two, one over two. And this would be the function notation transformation form. Right, we'll talk a little bit more about that. You are going to see this show up in some questions that you get on the homework. And we will talk a little bit more about what it means. But all you're really doing is you're taking your absolute value function just as it is, but instead of putting the actual absolute values, you're going to replace that with f of, or the f of x symbols, uh, to indicate that these transformations occur no matter what type of function we're dealing with, whether it's absolute values, whether it's uh, parabola, whether it's a linear function, and whatever the function happens to be, those same transformations are going to occur to it.